Welcome back to the F1 driver career. As you can tell from the thumbnail, you guys have voted. We are starting season two today. We were, as you can see, at Aston Martin. You guys had the opportunity to vote for me to move somewhere else, literally anywhere else, and you voted for me to move to Aston Martin in quite a chunk of majority as well. So I will try and sign for Aston Martin. If they don't let me sign for them, then McLaren are the next, and I'll have to pay for another thumbnail. So we're praying that Aston Martin accept me. Welcome to the first episode of season two. We will be uh, going to Bahrain uh, for today's episode as well. Confirmation that uh, we are seeing the end of Fernando Alonso in Formula One. He won the last ever Grand Prix of last season. He won his last ever Grand Prix in Formula One and now will leave Aston Martin. I'm going to approach other teams. Aston Martin are currently the second fastest car, supposedly. We are leaving Alfa Romeo and hopefully going to Aston Martin. Great. They're happy to enter into negotiations with us. They're happy to enter into negotiations with us. I'm not going to send a massive demand. I'm going to go low risk because we want to make sure we get this done. I don't want to pay for another thumbnail. I am an Aston Martin driver for season two. Welcome to our new team. I don't have enough money. Oh, I do have some money, actually. Development feedback. I can do that. 10% resource point income engine wear reduced by 10%. That's going to be more important, I think. Or will it be? Uh, let's do let's do development feedback. Let's do that. Let's do development feedback. Ladies and gentlemen, your new Aston Martin driver for season two. Me! But who's going to be my teammate? You presume Lance Stroll and that I've taken Fernando Alonso's empty seat. But will there be more moves... Let's get to the next season, see if there's any other craziness. But at the moment... Our new parts have completed without issue. Okay, good. Finished season. Intriguing. I'm up to level 13. I look good in green, I have to be honest. My guy does look good in green. One win, two pole positions. Just ahead of Lance in terms of position in the championship, but nearly three times as many points as him. So I certainly join Aston Martin as the number one driver. So for this new season, we're going to take Saudi Arabia out. And we're going to add China. I'm going to take Baku out because Baku's just really horrible in game. And we're going to add in Portimao as well. They are going to be the two track changes that we make. It's going to be a full still 23 race season. But we will go to Portugal and China rather than Saudi Arabia and Azerbaijan. I am happy for that. We'll start in Bahrain. I'm not going to change anything other than my helmet probably for this new season. We'll try and get one that ties in a bit more with the Aston Martin theme, Aston Martin aesthetic. And then we'll go to Bahrain. I'm not planning on changing the difficulty yet, but we'll wait and see what the hierarchy looks like when we get to the new season. We have a new helmet. We've just altered the colours on one of the other presets to uh, match the Aston Martin or as close as we can get to the Aston Martin green with the kind of AMR lime green in there as well as the white. We will potentially use uh, this Miami helmet we've altered from a, where, where it's white. It was kind of a weird yellow. We might use that as a one-off special for Miami. Uh... And maybe we use that for Vegas? What? I can't see what it is on the top. Oh, yeah, it's, that's a Las Vegas helmet, isn't it? I think it says Las on the right-hand side of this. Maybe we use that for Vegas. But our regular helmet is going to be this one this season. Uh, I don't know if we really want to change our victory call. We're quite happy with that as it is. And, uh, well, let's advance. Ladies and gentlemen, who's moving where? And what is the hierarchy going to look like in the performance index? Holy moly, we are the fastest car. Alfa Romeo, despite all of our adjustments for them last season, are the worst car. But supposedly, Aston Martin are the best car. 
They've barely upgraded their aero. They've done a lot on the chassis. They have done tyre wear, which makes me worry about the car feeling like absolute poop. But at least they haven't done brakes. Obviously, the thing that occasionally... They haven't done brakes yet. The thing that occasionally breaks the performance of the car in career mode, which is why we weren't able to continue the mighty team in the first place, is upgrading the brakes and the tyre wear upgrades as well. We're not going to upgrade tyre wear any further. We're not going to touch the brakes. We're going to concentrate on aero and engine and durability, which looks decent already. And we've kind of lucked out there. We'll see how that looks on track. Because that might significantly change. Ferrari were the fastest car. They are now the fifth fastest car. Mercedes have shot up. So supposedly, we have the best car on the grid. So maybe I do up the difficulty. I might just do Bahrain on 105. Just to get a clean view of what it's like at the level I was used to. And we'll see, we'll see how we do. We'll see how we do. But I'm obviously open to changing the... Uh, okay, we'll have the new obviously open to changing the difficulty if it's too easy. Bahrain also tends to be a, a circuit where the AI are quite strong. So that also makes me slightly apprehensive to up the difficulty at this stage. Going to a track where the AI are tend to be quite strong anyway. The Aston Martin car is gorgeous, and I can't wait to get behind the wheel of it. It's going to sound weird moving from the Ferrari engine Alfa Romeo to the Mercedes engine Aston Martin, but under Mike Crack's wing, we hopefully will perform as a team very well indeed. Now, who's moved where? Driver moves, as you can see there. There is actually an email for it, as pointed out by uh, someone in chat, so thank you for that. Alex Al Alexander Albon moves to Alfa Tauri to replace Ricardo. I moved to Aston Martin. Alonso is no longer driving this season. Joe has moved to Williams, replacing Albon. And Ricardo is moving to Alfa Romeo, replacing me. Here is the driver moves. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Bahrain. I don't think I'm going to have anything to upgrade at this early stage. Although it's nice to see that the team are upgrading lots of things everywhere. So for the first time... As an Aston Martin driver, let's head to track. Car feels good. Well, rephrase. The car doesn't feel bad is probably the better way to phrase it, considering we were concerned about the upgrades. So I'm happy enough with that. We'll, uh, we'll sim practice to just maximise all the resource point haul, etc. But ultimately, I think based on that experience... A, it feels like the difficulty might be okay, although obviously we need to see what that looks like in qualifying and the race. Uh, and B, the car feels like it's in a position where it's going to be fun to drive, which is good news. We did notice with Aston Martin, sorry, with Alfa Romeo, that we were better in quality than we were the race. So I'm intrigued to see if that trait carries over to the Aston Martin car. Okay, well, it says actually it might get a bit overcast towards the end of quality, but we won't see any rain in Bahrain, I don't think. Qualifying to come. Now, the quality practice program recommend... Well, not recommended seventh. You'd recommend first every time, but suggested seventh would be where I would qualify. So let's go and see how accurate that was. 28.8 is fast enough to go P1 in Q1 after run one. I imagine that should be fast enough then to see us through to the next session. We are considering... Oh, hello, Lewis. Lewis just goes in and puts in a 28.5. We did say that the AI do tend to be quite quick at Bahrain, so we're not too concerned about not being massively fast yet. We are currently P4. We drop a bit, but... We will comfortably be through with just the one run, which is good for tyres. P10 in the end. 128.3 from George. Okay. And Lance is comfortably through too as well, which is good. Be great to have a competitive teammate this season. Either the track conditions have significantly changed, or I put in a terrible first sector. To be fair, the track conditions probably have changed because it's been getting more and more overcast, hasn't it? And it did say that there was a risk of rain. And that might well have changed the track temperature. 
which has made things slightly difficult and slightly different. Much better exit the final turn, though. And we are going to pop it into P9, I think that was. P9 it is only in Q2, but it's enough to get through. That felt weird, though. Like, for the first quarter of that lap, first third of that lap, it said I was a quarter of a second down. We actually ended up, to be fair, I did end up only going three tenths faster on a brand new set compared to a set that had done two runs. I did a 28-8 in Q1, and then I did a 28-8 as a banker lap on the same set. So certainly track conditions were changing there, but I didn't get any quick or much quicker. The track didn't evolve as you anticipated that it would do. So what we're going to end up doing in Q3 now, I'm not sure. Let me say, on paper, we have the best car, but on the track, it might not actually end up being that way. Let's see what we can do after a second run in Q3 on brand new tyres with hopefully the track evolving nicely. But also, everyone else is going to be mad quick. I was a bit slow through one, but we got a good exit out of one in the end. Oh, I was going to say good grip run there, and then it just slightly gave way on exit. But you want to make sure you're slower in there, so you want to do this whole part down to the hip. You want to make sure you're as flat as you possibly can be for all of that. Get a good exit there. We're half a second up at the minute, which is decent. Other drivers are crossing the line now, finishing their faster laps. A good exit here if we can, which we have done. The Delta's still dropping. We're down to P8 in a minute. George did a 27-2. My Christ, George Russell. Where have you pulled a 27-2 from, mate? That is monstrous. Okay. Uh, 105 AI was where we were. I think the AI are just genuinely that bloody strong around Bahrain. We'll wait and see. I'd like to be into the 27s if we can be. We're 1.2 seconds up. I think that will be into the 27s. We do a 27.706. No, 7.17 it says on my steering wheel, which is good enough for P3. We will start our first ever Aston Martin Grand Prix on the second row. Ladies and gentlemen, George Russell is cracked. Over four tenths faster than anyone else. Lando was five milliseconds slower than me. And the gap from seconds to fifth is less than a tenth. There's a big gap to George. Then there's a big gap from Lewis back. And then there's another group that are within a tenth to two tenths of each other. But Pierre Gasly and certainly Max Verstappen will have n has not improved on that second run. I'd argue that Charles Leclerc should have gone faster as well. Although the Ferrari is now the fifth-ish fastest car, isn't it? On the performance index. So maybe it's not a surprise that Ferrari is as low down and as slow as it is. But George putting in that 27-2 is disgusting. I feel like he's taken a shortcut somewhere. That's outrageous. Max Verstappen certainly should have gone faster. But he must have made a mistake. Oh, well. Well, we will start P3 then for the Bahrain Grand Prix. But we'll expect to probably go backwards a little bit in race pace, I would imagine, if last season repeats its pattern of faster in quality and slower in the race. Right, the grid is not going to change because, quite frankly, no one is going to have picked up any penalties this early on. I am... Anticipating going medium, medium, soft. That is what I would like to do. And it makes it quite simple. It actually reckons with my personalised tyre wear that we can do that six or so seconds quicker, five and a half seconds quicker on the same pit strategy because our tyre life is going to be that good. That will open up opportunities to over or undercut on any of those stints. And if we need to, we can throw a hard tyre in there as well. But... I'm probably going to start on the mediums. We'll see what everyone else is doing. Lots of mediums around us. George on the hards is intriguing. No surprise that a lot at the back are on the softs to try and make as much time as possible and undercut as much as possible to get themselves in amongst the front runners. But Yuki and George Russell, the only on the hards. And nobody in the top 13 on a soft. I start P3. My teammate, unfortunately, starts 
P20. That says to me that Lance Stroll actually did take a penalty because he managed to make it through Q1. So actually there were some penalties in uh, this first race, which is not great, Lance. Can't take pens at race one. Jesus Christ. All right. Fuel-wise, I've no idea what to or not to do with this Aston Martin, but I physically can't put any more in. We are at 110 kilos, so we have to hope that that's enough. Well, here we go then. Tyres are all up to temperature. This time at Bahrain, hoping to not get crashed out by my teammate, which is what happened last year. Looking at you, Valtteri Bottas. Lance Stroll starts last, so that's not the ideal way for the team to get off to a good start this constructor's season. 0.8 metres isn't a great stopping point, but with George on hards in front, albeit he was rapid in qualifying, we will hopefully stand a chance of ending on the podium come the end of 58 laps. 57 laps, actually, as it happens. And... Or a bit of wheel spin, but we're off. Lewis has got a good start behind me. Lando's... Sorry, Piastri's not had a great start. Lando's not had a great start. Lewis is looking around the outside, but I've got a relatively clean run around the outside here till Piastri jinked. Lando's managed to come back up the inside, but hasn't held it. And Piastri and Russell are going for it into turn two for the lead of the race. Look at the run they got on me there, though. Lando, that McLaren is quick. McLaren is quick in a straight line. He's fighting hard. George Russell loses out on the lead to Oscar Piastri. And on those hard tyres, he is probably going to go backwards at the beginning of this race, you imagine. I'm going to go up the inside of him here as well. I can't waste time sat behind a Mercedes on hards. I can't allow Oscar Piastri to get too far down the road. That McLaren is so fast in a straight line. We really are going to need to improve the ERS capabilities of this Aston Martin. We did anticipate race pace was going to be really strong from it, the other drivers around Bahrain. It's not the greatest outlier in terms of uh, giving you an accurate reading of difficulty. But at the moment, in the fastest car, qualifying P3 and running P2 is about right so far. Oscar has just decided that... He wants to disappear, though, apparently. So, at the minute, Piastri is favourite. Norris now past George Russell as well. Here comes trouble. I'm back in a McLaren sandwich again. Look at the speed difference in a straight line. I know I'm running high downforce here as well, to be fair. Which is definitely going to affect my competitiveness in a straight line. I'm hoping, around the twisties, if I can make minimal mistakes, then in the middle sector... We can certainly hold our own and extend gaps to be able to defend from DRS straights elsewhere on the circuit. But Piastri's just gone. Over two seconds down the road already. We do know our tyre wear is supposed to be decent though, so that might factor in at some point. And Russell back past Lando. They are fighting behind, which is going to allow... Myself and Oscar to just disappear down the road. Piastri already with a four second gap to his teammate in P3. I'm imagining that everyone around me is also on a two stop. Both McLarens might well be on a two stop. We, we might get lucky. That, oh, one stop. Okay. One stop from Oscar Piastri. He will medium soft or medium hard. It may well be possible to do a medium soft around here in the second season with tyre wear. But we are definitely two stopping. Now actually, having Lando take me might not be a terrible thing. If he can drag me along and keep me in touch with his teammate, then I'm quite happy to sit with Lando, work with him, and close the gap. 
gap is less than a second. Okay, they're on fresh hards. Their tyres are three laps old. Okay, we think they've got two stops remaining. So jo stops remaining. George is on the harder tyre, but he's going on a two-stop, whereas Piastri on the softer tyre is on a one-stop. So there are multiple strategies at play from multiple different teams here. I want to know what Lando's on, though. And both McLaren's one-stopping, or is one two-stopping and the other one-stopping? Are they splitting the strategy? Or is Piastri on the same, same strategy as his teammate, which is why he's busting a gut to get down the road so far, so that they don't lose any time if they pit on the same lap on the same strategy? This is fascinating at the moment, but... Oscar Piastri is absolutely, absolutely the uh, the favourite for this Grand Prix at the moment. I wasn't planning on battling with Lando Norris, but I had such a speed differential then that it made sense to just make the overtake because I wasn't going to lose much time there at all in doing so. My tyres are running quite warm though, but that will probably be because of the higher downforce we're running. Lando's having another look. George might follow him through here, and I think Lando will just get me. Oh, he's going to park it on the apex there. I didn't quite read the duck under quickly enough for the switch back. Now, this might be the point now where we tuck behind Lando and hope just to get dragged along, because we'll have DRS here. We'll have DRS down the main straight. We'll have DRS between turns three and four as well. If Lando can pull me away, then that would be lovely. And we will ask about his pit strategy in a moment as well. We know Piastri's on a one-stop. We know Russell's on a two-stop. We're on a two-stop. What's Lando doing? Lando is also one-stopping. Mighty in the traction zones. Really mighty. George is gone. I can't fight that. Now Lewis is coming as well. Okay. There's a, a bit of a gap back to Pierre Gasly in the, in the Alpine. I'll be intrigued to see how Lance is getting on. I think he's made a couple of positions so far, which is good news. I'll ask about my teammate in just a second. It may even just be George that we hang on to the back of at the moment. I, all I know is I want to stay with this group of four around me. Both Mercedes and both McLarens who we're going to be fighting with for a podium in this Grand Prix. And maybe the Ferrari might have decent race pace. Let's ask about my teammate. How's Lance doing? Started 20th. 17th so far for Lance. Made three places. I need to make sure I get a decent exit here. Otherwise, I'm going to get swallowed by another Mercedes in a DRS zone, just like the last lap. That was a better exit this time. Although, Lewis is still coming at pace. We definitely have a higher downforce setup here for Bahrain, don't we? I think that's easy. quite obvious. Still got to fight to try and keep the position, though. What's Lewis doing strategy-wise? Because both the McLarens are on the same tyre, whereas... The Mercedes okay, are on different different tyres, but they are both on a two-stop strategy. I've not got the pace. I've not got the race pace to stick with those around me at the minute. These Mercedes and these McLarens are too fast. Helps when Lewis Hamilton locks up, though, and makes a mistake like that. Especially when he went through the DRS detection point before me. And I get DRS off the back of him. Cheers, pal. Toodaloo. See you later. He says, even without DRS, he's closing up on me. George having a look at Lando now. They're going to start battling in front and coming back towards us, which is only good news for me. Be careful. Position. That's us down a place. Yeah, it's fine. It's not a problem. Playing the long game. Especially if they end up going medium, medium hard. And we're on softs at the end of the race. We'll be in a good position still. We are playing that long game. You have to go around the outside, mate. 
I'm not just going to let you through. Bye. Hello again. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to switch back on Pierre. It didn't quite work. See the position. Again, we're finding that we had really good quality pace, but maybe not the race pace here in Bahrain. It will differ track to track, certainly, as it did last season. Still happy enough to be competitive where we are at the minute. Oh, no! Piastri! Yellow flag for Oscar Piastri in the lead. The man that is in front in this Grand Prix on his own with the race waiting to be handed to him has spun at turn 11 and is sat sideways in the middle of the track. That changes how this race might pan out. You silly, silly boy, Oscar. Now, will he be going again by the time we get there? Yes, there he is. That's a free position. We're now about six seconds closer to P1 than we were before Oscar Span. Okay, clear. And he's now a lot further away from P1 than he was okay, when he span. Unbelievable, Oscar Piastri. The mistakes of what was a rookie. But this is his second season. Shouldn't be making mistakes like that, mate, now. Not if you've got a race-winning potentially championship winning car extra downforce here really is killing me in a straight line very much track specific though we will not be this slow comparative to, comparatively to everyone else in a straight line at other circuits I do always lean towards a slightly higher downforce setup personally it's just how I prefer to set the car up. How I prefer to have the car handle. Be a bit more planted underneath me at the sacrifice of straight line speed. Not sure if Gasly's just holding Checo up here. That Alpine might be just a little bit too quick in a straight line for the Red Bull to get past at the moment. I'm not, not quite too sure who's having the better time of it here. That was my fastest lap of the race, even with my tyres wearing as they are. Now Perez is having a look at Gasly down the straight. Might have been a little bit of contact between them there, actually. Nothing flew off Perez's car, but certainly it looked like Perez changed direction rather sharply there, either with contact or to avoid contact. Perez is past Gasly. Pierre is starting to lose some ground. But with the DRS, he might be able to stick with Sergio and still fight for P4. We're sitting sitting quite comfortably at the minute, actually. My tyres are fine. Pace-wise, we're fine. We're not planning on pitting until that 19. But if no one else has started to pull the trigger by... 17, I will certainly consider stopping on 18. The plan was to do 19 laps per stint. So 19 laps on this set, on this set, 19 laps on the next set. Oh, copy Pierre there. And then 19 laps on the soft set. Which is absolutely doable. Need to concentrate a little bit. <laughs> but I might throw in an undercut or an overcut here or there, depending on the scenario. I could maybe consider going and stopping like maybe that 15 and going on to hards and doing a slightly longer middle stint on a harder tyre and that might gain me more time and that then would allow me still the option to go to mediums or softs at the end of the race. But if there's a, a safety car earlier than lap 30 or so, or earlier than lap 25 or so, it would lessen my options. I would be tempted to go to a hard tyre now, you know. Depending on where I come out, which says 19th, which is behind the Williams, but ahead of the Haas. We could try that. 
It might be worth a go. Let's take a risk. Why not? Let's box now. Significantly earlier than initially planned. With our tyres now basically at that 25% drop off. And go medium, hard, soft. Rather than medium, medium, soft. We will change strategically now. It is a gamble. But it's one that might work for us. To help us get back in touch with those front three. Some are on a one stop. Some are on a two. There's a lot left to happen in this Grand Prix. But if I can box now for hards. And be faster than I am on the worn mediums. Then ultimately we'll have made the right decision. And those soft tyred runners will be pitting soon as well. Now what I want here. Okay. Is effectively free air to pump in laps. And then when they, those guys all with their soft tyres start to pit, they'll just get out of the way. And it reckons I can go to the end on this set from here. That is not my intention. I do want to stop again about between lap 38 and 40 for mediums or softs. Not yet decided. Depends on how this set wear and what happens between now and then. Hogwood might have damage, to be fair. Either that or he's just deathly slow. He had a collision with Magnussen on lap one. That says to me that Nico Hulkenberg has front wing damage and that's why he's as slow as he is. That's Let's Hulkenberg ask and find out, shall we? Yep. There you go. Doesn't seem to be affecting performance. Is that so? Is that why he's 14 seconds behind Logan Sargent, is it? Not affecting performance, they say. I think that's bollocks. Tsunoda in off his hard tyres, which says that George Russell might be boxing soon from his too. The extra grip, mate. Look at that extra grip. They still have the straight line speed. But I've just got the extra grip. All the way around the inside, then outside of Logan Sargent. We should see some more pitters soon. And as we say that, there's an Alfa Romeo in the pits. And a Mercedes has boxed. That's George Russell, I believe, yet yeah, has boxed to go hard, soft. His one-stop strategy... No, he was two-stopping. His two-stop strategy is hard, soft, medium, presumably. Which I imagine is what, yep, is what Yuki Tsunoda's done as well. Let's see how this all pans out then. Yellow flags in front. There's a Ferrari going slowly. There's a Ferrari potentially out of the race here. And it is. It is Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc is full throttle here. And then just pulls off. His engine has gone. Ferrari, engine troubles. That's a free position. We'll take it. Charles Leclerc is out. Logan is not really going to get in the way here. It just gives me the DRS here. Cheers, pal. Sorry, Charles. See you later, pal. Bye-bye. I feel sorry for him, but nah. Charles Leclerc in a Ferrari. Having reliability issues around Bahrain. Is it 2019 all over again? K-Mag Pitts. Gives me DRS in the process and moves out of the way. Thank you. Bye. Ocon's also in the pits, as is the Williams from behind me as well, which is Sergeant, because there's Joe Guan Yu and the other Williams right in front of me now, battling with Daniel Ricciardo, who's in my old Alfa Romeo. The car behind's just boxed for mediums. Car behind on the medium tyre now. Oh, you are slow through there, Mr. Joe Guan Yu. Going up the inside of you with the hairpin, thank you. DRS and Daniel Ricciardo as well. We'll try and do to Danny Rick what we did to Logan Sargent. If I can get a decent exit here. Which I have done. He's going to go defensive. I'll go around the outside of him. Got much fresher tyres. Much grippier tyres. Toodaloo Tatibais. We're in the points again. 
Now it's my teammate Lance Stroll that's in front of me. He may well be pitting this lap. What strategy is he on? There's a Ferrari, sorry, a Mercedes in the pits. Lewis Hamilton's boxing. One of the Red Bulls is boxing as well. One of the McLarens has boxed. In fact, maybe both the McLarens have boxed. Oh, Lance has got front wing damage. Hopefully they'll change that in the box. That's Lewis Hamilton. Hello, Lewis. We have undercut Lewis Hamilton. He will now have much fresher tyres than me. But that decision to pit significantly earlier has gained us a decent amount of time on Lewis. A good three to five seconds or so. And now if he is going to be pick quicker than me, which he should be, in a equally as fast car on fresher, softer tyres... I'll hope to use some battery and hang on to the back of him. And extend my hard stint. So that I can use softs at the end of the race. Rather than mediums. That's the plan. Back up to P6. And Sergio Perez is now in the pits. Carlos Sainz is yet to pit as well, I think. George Russell is going for a move on Piastri and has that move done. Lewis goes for a move on me. Gets it done. He'll have DRS as well, so we'll use a bit of battery here just to try and stick with him. But we'll still be within a second for the next DRS zone, so it's not a problem. Quite happy with how this race is panning out so far. I think Oscar Piastri has wing damage. The gap to him is coming down, whereas the gap to Lewis is growing, and the gap to even Gasly behind me is coming down, even prior to him getting within DRS range. I think Oscar Piastri is carrying some front wing damage. Because look, he's under 9 seconds now. McLaren is walking wounded right now. Who he got the damage from, I don't know. Whether it was his teammate or one of the Mercedes. But certainly he got damage of someone. I'm sure of it. Either that or he's got an engine issue or some description that we haven't heard about yet. But he is Struggs. Lewis is gaining on him hand over fist. We're gaining on him quite considerably as well. Over half a second a lap we're gaining on Oscar Piastri at the moment. We should be with him before we make our next pit stop maybe. As soon as Lewis gets past I'll ask. Provided I'm still ahead of Pierre Gasly, that is. <laughs> Which I might not be for long. He says. Gasly and this Alpine have shown some really good pace this weekend. And to be fair, Ocon is right with Max Verstappen as well. Alpine got a decent car. In Bahrain, at least. Long season, though. 23 races. Okay, some information on Piastri. They seem to have an issue. There you go confirmation Piastri does have a mechanical issue of some description we suspected it was damage confirmed now that it's not damage or if it is damage he's got <laughs> more than just front wing damage it may well be floor or side pod damage because he was he was slower he was slower around the turns not in a straight line which says to me that it's aero based, not engine based. But Lewis is now past him. And Piastri is five and a half seconds down the road. That was 12 or so when we came out of the pits. They've done 26 laps on those oh. Got one more stop. That's got why Piastri is going slow. He's got a mechanical problem, which is adding to his issues because... He's even slower because he hasn't stopped yet. Neither of the McLarens have stopped yet. So not only is he on super old tyres, but he's got a mechanical issue as well. Hi, Max. Bye, Max. Yep, I know. Oh, 
I'm not going to the end of the race on these tyres, so am I, Mark? Can't afford to lose time behind Piastri at all. Verstappen, if he's got anything about him, should go for it into the hairpin here. See you, pal. That's two positions, one corner. That was a career mode only move. I was intending, really, only to go for Max, but ended up taking Piastri as well, and I'm not going to complain about it. P5. Max will come back past me, but we certainly didn't lose any time behind Oscar Piastri, and that was ultimately what I was hoping to avoid. I imagine Piastri will box this lap. But there's Verstappen behind me, then Perez behind him, and then just five cars all in the same corner. Okay, the Very much here's expecting the Piastri to box four. now, and indeed he does. Piastri's in. He needed to do that. Might be able to recover some of the pace he's lost with a mechanical issue with fresh tyres, but still not looking good for Oscar Piastri for the rest of this race. I'm thinking at the moment of going mediums on 38 and not using the soft tyre at all. But... We'll play it by ear. If there's a safety car at any point between now and 38, we'll definitely go mediums. It's not got the traction out of there. There's a Haas retiring. I think a that was running P19 and dead last anyway is retiring from the race. He's out. Rip. Sorry, pal. Either that or well, the fact he's still continuing says to me he might have a puncture, actually. He's still going. Has he got a puncture? Yes. Yes, he has. Rear left puncture for Nico Hulkenberg. Was already running dead last. And now will be uh, even even deader. Is that a thing? I mean, apparently, just because you've got a puncture doesn't mean you can't drive. But the car might be very hard to handle at the moment with that puncture. Here comes Lando. Bye. Russell in the pits off those soft tyres. I imagine he's going mediums because he's already run a set of hards and indeed he is. So he's going to try and take his mediums from lap 36 to the end. I'm going to try and take my mediums to lap, from lap 39 to the end. Because we're going to pit 38 and we'll come out on 39. So I will have a three lap tyre advantage on George. But he's going to have a significant pace advantage on me. So... I, at the moment, at the, if I was a betting man, I'd say we are set for a P6 or 7 finish here. Which at a track that has us this much slower than the AI, knowing that at other tracks we will be much more competitive. I'm quite happy with it, sat at 105 at the minute. We'll see what it's like in the next one, which I think will be Australia, actually, now that we've taken Saudi Arabia out. It will be Australia next, and then China. That 38 was the original stop lap. We were going to go... or We anticipated going medium, medium, soft. But tyre wear has been slightly higher than we expected it to be. So I don't... I don't anticipate the soft tyres being able to do... 19 laps but equally i can't really take these hard tires any further because they're just too slow so we're going to pit in the middle and we're going to do a medium medium hard run rather than a medium medium soft run albeit the hard stint is in the middle two sets of mediums and a set of hards rather than two sets of mediums and a set of softs lovely 2.2 seconds stop is great though we might come out just behind the alfa romeo just ahead of the Alfa Romeo. Hello, Danny Rick. Right, now Piastri's on hard tyres. I presume he still has his mechanical issue as well. Nine lap old tyres are not fresh. I'm sorry. It sounds like he might have fixed his mechanical issue, though. 
judging by that. Okay, so they did just say he's on fresh hard tyres, and now he's on old hard tyres on the same lap. <laughs> but no, that mechanical issue for Piastri is fixed. So now we're having to lean on purely just a fresher tyre alone to try and close in on that McLaren now. Ocon's in the box. He was just behind us by about four or five seconds before we pit. He's gone soft. Ocon is going to be a problem at the end of the race. It's going to be very quick on those. Okay, so science isn't in this lap, but Verstappen was. And he's gone to hards, Max Verstappen. So we will have a pace advantage over Max Verstappen for the rest of the race. Hello, Oscar. We'll also soon, hopefully, have a positional advantage over Max Verstappen for the rest of the race as well. I'm going to try and catch Max now on those hards. Get myself up into P7. We believe Sainz still has to stop again. Annoyingly, Max is going to get DRS off the back of Hulkenberg here, which is going to mean he's not really that vulnerable. But actually, that might help us, because that might keep him slightly further away from us, so we can just get him comfortably down the, down the pit straight next time. No, Max doesn't get DRS off the back of a pass. Who better stay out of the way for me too. Thank you, Nico. Otherwise, I'd have been very annoyed. There you go. Gasly in the pits. Mercedes in the pits as well. That will be Lewis. And Sergio Perez too. What they go to will determine how many positions we may or may not make between now and the end of the race. Sergio Perez onto a hard set. Now Gasly's the one I'm really intrigued about. That's the fastest lap of the race. But past Perez. And Gasly is also out on a hard set of tyres. So we are trying then, if our tyres last, with pace, to finish P5 ahead of Pierre Gasly. That would be my aim right now. Hello, Max. I'd say bye, but it's not going to be bye, is it? It'll be straight back by me, I think. With the DRS zone. I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch Gasly at the moment. I'm praying that we can, but it might be P6 or 7. Oh no, never mind, Carlos Sainz is in the pits. Well, it'll be, hopefully, P5 or 6 then. Bye, Max. Back down to P7 we go. <laughs> Put Max offline here. We'll have DRS and battery. And we'll take P5 away from Max Verstappen again. All of this battling with Max, though, is just making Pierre Gasly get further and further away from us at the moment. And he's still there. He won't give it up, Max Verstappen. He has done now. Now, can I extend a gap big enough to mean that I'm safe from Max? And try and just concentrate on closing on Pierre. Our gap to the car in front is 4.4 seconds. There's a yellow flag. It's a Haas going slowly again. Which one we're not sure. Might be Magnussen actually. It is Nico, unfortunately for him. Sorry, Nico, you're out. He had a puncture. Had front wing damage and now retires with a mechanical issue as well. Not a great season opener for Nico Hulkenberg, bless him. Gasly at the minute is actually very quick on those hards. Struggling to catch Pierre. Oh, that will be why Pierre has extended and gotten away then, actually. Pierre Gasly's in George Russell's DRS. That will be why the gap to Gasly was getting bigger because he's had DRS where I haven't. He is now battling with George Russell, which hopefully will only bring the two of them closer to us 
at least briefly. And maybe there might be a sniff of a podium, but I doubt it. Wait and see. They are going to fight hard, though, for the rest of the race, probably. At least for a couple of laps, anyway. Just like me and Max, who's probably going to come and try and get me now. Just as Russell goes for it on Gasly, Verstappen goes for it on me. Or Rus although Russell didn't get it done, evidently. Verstappen did. But well, they're still fighting in front. And we're back past Max. Gasly's back past George. I've just remembered that George Russell had front wing damage. And if they've not changed that, then George Russell still has wing damage. And I just got distracted looking in my mirror because it is now full of two Red Bulls, not just one. Sergio Perez has joined the party and we might be three wide into turn four. Sandwiched horribly there, trying desperately not to get any damage. And Checo's just taken two places around the outside. Oh, that was pure panic. That was absolute panic. It's cost us a second and a half or more to George Russell. And Esteban Ocon's coming on his soft tyres now as well. Where has Checo come from? Have Max and I have been battling that hard that Checo just arrived? We are still closing on George Russell again, though. So as soon as Gasly gets him out of DRS range, George will tumble back towards us again. Gasly, looking good for a podium here. It's going to be Lando from Lewis, from Pierre. And then who's in P4? I don't know. George, Sergio, Chris, Max, or Esteban. There is currently a uh, five-way fight for a fourth-placed position. Checo's going to go for George here. Hopefully they screw each other over at turn one. Which they have done. George has gone very slowly. He's going to go slower yet still. I'm worried about getting tangled up here. Concentrate, face. Let yeah, the pictures do the talking. Perez. Hoping the pictures are doing the talking right now because I'm not doing any. Play DRS chick in there. Just to make sure I got it here. George is still ahead of the two Red Bulls. Verstappen actually is fighting with his teammate now as well. Joy of joys. Get me down the road. Pierre Gasly has secured himself a podium here. We might be able to secure ourselves a P4. I can just knuckle down and disappear. Initially, I was very concerned with the amount of cars that were right next to each other there. 
now, actually, the fact that there were so many cars right next to each other there is going to be our saving grace. We will finish this race, P4. Special note of Pierre Gasly, driver of the day for me. A podium in that Alpine is very respectable indeed. Information on Magnussen for you. Right, they've got a serious car issue. It looks God. like they're retiring. Haas have had a day to forget, haven't they? Both cars retiring before the end of the race now. And I've just noticed Lewis Hamilton is right with Lando Norris. Lando did have the race win in the bag. But remember, Lando did a one stop. Lewis has done two, has much fresher tyres. And Lewis Hamilton is currently favourite for this Grand Prix victory, despite being in P2 with three laps to go. George is still somehow hanging on in P5 as well. Lewis Hamilton leads. But who got... Who went first through the detection point? Who's going to have DRS? Lando Norris is now back in front. I think you can tell by that that uh, Lewis Hamilton has the DRS. Or oh, does he? Lando's fighting back. No, Lando might have the DRS. I have no idea right now. All we know is that there is a battle going on for race number one of this calendar season. Verstappen is now past. No, he's not. George Russell's got DRS behind. Three laps to go. Lewis now leads from Lando. Perez is now past Russell and Checo takes two positions at turn one again. I see it was turn four he took two positions previously, but Checo still making moves. Lewis should be able to hold on for the victory from here now with a tyre advantage. Lando will certainly hold on for a P2. Pierre will definitely hold on for a P3. And I have to hope now that Sergio Perez can't close on me enough in the next two and a half laps to steal away my P4, try and save battery between now and the end of the race and hang on for a fourth place finish after a third place start. I'm at 25% where he's going for it, Checo. I'm on the marbles. I've oversteered. Checo is through. He's forced himself into P4. We have one and a half laps to try and find my way back past. I'm trying to build my battery at the same time. Maybe their next lap. But I need to be able to stay with him. Maybe turn one. This can be a battle now. Ah, a little bit squirrely on power. Might have to be turn four. It's not going to be turn four. Ocon is now past Russell, who's tumbled. Make a mistake, please, Sergio. It's not going to work. Red Bull's just got too much room in a straight line, I think. Oh, mate. <laughs> a P5 start. Sorry, a P3 start for a P5 finish. As Lewis Hamilton wins the race from Lando Norris, congratulations to Mercedes for getting a victory on opening day. You can see Checo's used all of his batteries flashing now. I wasn't the only one saving my battery for the end of this race. Sergio Perez was doing the same. Congratulations, Red Bull. On a P4 and 6, we get a P5 on Aston Martin debut. Which is still a good result. It's still a good result. We'll be happy enough with that. I get driver of the day as well, so that's an added bonus. Even though I went from P3 to P5 and went backwards, I still got driver of the day. So that, te that tells you everything about the performance and battle that we put in in that Grand Prix. Piastri threw it away, ended up finishing 13th. That one stop cost Lando the win, and Piastri binning it cost him the win. And then the strategy meant that he got no points either. 
that was a decent debut, a tough debut, but certainly an enjoyable one. Now, we've got quite a gap to the next Grand Prix because we did not have Jeddah on the calendar anymore because we're going Austria-China rather than Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, Austria. And then from China, we're going to Miami, or from Austria, we're going to China and then Miami rather than Australia, Austria, Australia to uh, Baku to Miami. So there is going to be a bit of a gap here to gain some resource points and hopefully up, upgrade some bits on the car as well. Marketing activities have gone up. I'm going to go for Charles as my rival because Ferrari are the slowest of any of the other cars around us. Charles, unfortunately, obviously retiring from that last Grand Prix. But we'll take that as my rivalry. Ta very much. It's a decent start. And like I say, I think... I think moving forward, we will be more competitive on 105 than we were in that Grand Prix. The end plates pass as well, which is good. We've got loads of resource points that I can now spend, that I would like to spend here on DRS and also on ERS. Having a fully upgraded ERS is very important. So, comparatively for each department, our engine is the second best. Our durability is the fourth best. Our chassis is supposedly the best. And our aero is supposedly the best as well. So it is the it is the engine that is our downfall at the moment. That Mercedes power unit. As we saw, we were lacking in straight line speed in Bahrain. But that was down to setup as well. More weekly resource points as we head towards the next Grand Prix. We'll skip and advance that and we'll show you what the weather is going to be like in Australia for round number two of this second season before we end the episode. Whilst I ask you guys to drop the video a like if you've enjoyed this beginning to season two, it is unfortunately going to have some rain on race day. We will start wet in Australia and end dry. Bagger. Not to worry. Not to worry, morale is high in all departments, which should hopefully mean that we progress and get all of our parts pass first time round. Currently fifth in the drivers, currently fifth in the constructors as well, because Lance Stroll managed to finish himself a lofty 15th in that first round. Would have been a lot higher had he not taken a penalty in round bloody one. So hopefully Lance will be a bit more competitive in Australia. It's not a strong circuit for me, Australia, so I'm probably going to be about where I was in round two comparatively to round one. But that's better than where we were in rounds one and two last season, isn't it, comparatively? Where last year we were 19th with a DNF and 15th in Australia last season. So we're certainly enjoying things more in Aston Martin than we did in Alfa Romeo. Not that we didn't enjoy the second half of the season in Alfa Romeo, to be fair, but... We'll wait and see what happens in Australia, but that is all for round one, episode one of season two. Hopefully you enjoyed Bahrain. Hopefully you'll join me for Australia. Follow the links in the description to join me on stream live on Twitch or on YouTube. Do subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any more on this channel as well. I'll see you next time.